Archaeologists and scientists can't explain everything they find. When they can't find definitive information, they speculate. If they can't even come up with a good guess, they might sometimes be inclined to dismiss whatever they're looking at as a hoax. There are countless examples of great scientific and archaeological mysteries all over the world, and we'll be looking at some of the best of them in this video. Scientists and historians have long wondered what the mysterious lines in the desert of the Near East were created for. In April 2020, they came up with a new theory. It's now thought that the lines, which are made up of low stone walls that sometimes run on for miles, are ancient hunting tools. To be more specific, they're animal traps. Our ancient ancestors would chase animals into these areas where they'd be herded together and confined by the walls, making them much easier to catch and kill. The lines were first noted by Westerners when the British RAF pilots of the early 20th century spotted them lining the deserts of Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. The longest of the walls are in Jordan, where they sometimes extend for 40 miles. The giveaway that they could be hunting aids is the presence of circular pits where the lines converge. Archaeologists think that the traps were created about 2,400 years ago and remained in use for about two centuries. The walls aren't actually high enough to trap the gazelles they were apparently designed for, so it's likely they worked by redirecting and channeling the animals instead. Most modern-day academics have written off the Voynich manuscript as a hoax, but there are still those who believe it's a genuine historical document that simply hasn't been translated correctly yet. The manuscript was discovered in Rome in 1912, and its contents have remained a mystery ever since. At one point, experts at Yale University were so convinced of its authenticity that they added it to their Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library. Nobody knows the history of the book prior to 1912, but carbon dating tests carried out on its pages suggest that it's been around since the 15th century. It's 240 pages long and contains illustrations along with line after line of text that's never been translated. A cipher for the text is provided, but it doesn't work. Without knowing what the text says, understanding the meaning of the Voynich manuscript is impossible. There are illustrations of plants and flowers on some of the pages, but then there could be drawings of women in 15th century clothing on the next page. There's nothing to suggest that the contents of the manuscript are especially important, but that begs the question of why someone went to such lengths to encode it. Perhaps it was a practical joke. Our next topic isn't so much about the artifacts of an ancient culture as it is about its absence. The Shangxing Duai culture was one of ancient China's greatest civilizations, but they disappeared from history around 3,000 years ago. Whatever happened to them appears to have been very sudden. Now, there's a new theory about their disappearance. The Shangxing Duai might have been forced to move after an enormous earthquake blighted their territory and redirected a river, depriving them of their source of water. There's some evidence that they survived the disaster and moved closer to the new flow of the river. That would explain why a cluster of giant bronze sculptures of the kind associated with the Sangxing Dui was discovered in Jinsha, far from their traditional homeland in 1986. The theory is neat, but it doesn't explain the ultimate fate of the Sangxing Duai. Even if they moved, they still stopped making their sculptures and other cultural artifacts after the move. The deliberate burial of so many of their artifacts suggests an act of sacrifice or tribute. Did this civilization voluntarily disband, with all of its people going their own way? If so, why? When we find something that's so impossibly out of place that it can't possibly have belonged to the era it appears to have come from, we describe it as an out-of-place artifact or upart. There may be no upart in the world more bizarre than the Williams Enigmalith. It was found by electrical engineer John J. Williams 
at an undisclosed rural location in North America in 1998. In form, it's an electrical component embedded in a block of solid granite that's at least 100,000 years old. Given Williams' profession, he was immediately accused of creating the object himself as a hoax. In response, Williams has said any scientist or researcher is welcome to come and inspect it themselves. Very few have taken him up on his invitation. The electric component shows no obvious signs of being welded or glued to the rock. Instead, it seems the rock formed around it. Given the age of the rock, that ought to be impossible. To make matters worse for scientists, the three prongs of the component's plug are held in a matrix made of unknown material. Most scientists still believe it to be a hoax, but none of them has so far been able to prove it. We're back to strange walls in Jordan now, but unlike the animal traps we looked at earlier on, scientists have no explanation for the existence of this structure. It's called the Khat Shabib, and by rights, it ought to be as world famous as the Great Wall of China. The wall is colossal. It runs through the Jordanian desert for 90 miles, and yet it seems to have served no purpose whatsoever, past or present. Archaeologists have never been able to detect the presence of a settlement anywhere near the wall, so the idea of it being a defensive or perimeter wall is out of the window. If it weren't for the fact that a British diplomat spotted it out of his plane window in 1948 and asked about it, it might never have caught the attention of archaeologists at all. Various exploratory digs have been carried out along the length of the wall, but they've yielded nothing. Whoever created the Katshabib didn't leave behind so much as a single artifact, or at least a single artifact we've been able to find. The wall must surely have had a purpose, but we don't know what it was. We know so little about it that we can't even say when it was built. While we're in Jordan, we should take a look at its vast, unexplained circles. Between Jordan, Syria, and Turkey, there are more than a dozen of these circles in the region, but nobody knows who made them or why. To archaeologists, they're one of the world's greatest and most visible unexplained mysteries. Experts have been able to work out that the circles are about 2,000 years old. Most of them are made of stones piled four or five feet high, arranged in circles, with an average diameter of 1,300 feet. One of the circles is cut in two by an ancient Roman road, so the circles must have been here before the Romans arrived in the region. It's likely that they were created by individuals who tied themselves with rope to a central point and walked around it, thus ensuring the shape they created was circular. This would explain why there are imperfections in the circles at points where there were physical obstacles in the way of their creators. That theory probably explains how the circles were made, but it doesn't tell us who made them, and it offers no insight into why they made them. Our Neolithic ancestors might have been primitive by modern standards, but they knew a thing or two about art. We can see that by looking at the Kochno Stone in Scotland. It's thought of as the greatest example of Neolithic art in the British Isles, but its purpose remains a mystery. The Kochno Stone is a single slab, 40 feet long, and covered all over its surface with patterned ring and cup markings. The position of each mark was chosen with precision and care, which suggests purpose. But if there's a purpose here, we can't even offer an educated guess about what it may have been. It doesn't help that the stone became a tourist attraction immediately after it was discovered in 1887, and visitors were allowed to walk all over it. We'll never know how much archaeological evidence was destroyed by that lack of care. The markings on the slab were in danger of being worn away altogether in 1965, so it was decided that the stone should be reburied for the sake of preservation. It's only dug back up and exhibited to the public on special occasions. That way, this 4,000-year-old work of art should still be around for future generations to wonder about. 
The town of Rockwall in Texas, USA is so named because of its ancient wall. The town has named itself after something it doesn't understand, but nor does anybody else. The wall, which is sometimes half-jokingly referred to as the Great Wall of Texas, was excavated in 1852. When the renowned archaeologist Robert T. Hill examined the wall in 1901, he declared it to be nothing more than a natural sandstone dike, which temporarily ended the debate about whether or not the wall had been built by human hands. Robert's assessment was flawed, though, as he was only able to inspect the sections of the wall that had been excavated in 1901. Several more sections have been unearthed since then, and they're clearly not part of a natural sandstone dike. Although there's still some controversy and debate about the topic, most archaeologists now agree that the Great Wall of Texas doesn't have a natural origin. That obviously means it must have an artificial origin, but the question of who built it and what it was used for remains unsolved. We don't have a perfect method for detecting or predicting earthquakes even with all the technology at our disposal today. But the Chinese had one 1,900 years ago. This basic seismograph was created by a Chinese inventor called Shang Heng in the year 132. It looks more like a vase than a scientific instrument, but it was and still is perfectly suited for its function. When placed on the ground, the pendulum inside Hang's seismograph is so sensitive that it can detect tremors occurring several miles away. If the swing goes beyond a certain level, it dislodges a ball from inside the mouth of one of the device's decorative dragon sculptures. The ball drops into the mouth of a frog, and that's the signal for anybody looking at the seismograph that it's time to run to safety. It's even sophisticated enough to give observers an idea of which direction the tremors are coming from. Of course, the biggest limitation of the device is that it can only really detect an earthquake that's already started to happen. It can't tell you whether there's one on the way. Still, it was better than nothing, and it would be well over a thousand years before anybody came up with a better method. The paintings on the walls of Sego Canyon in Thompson Springs, Utah, USA are thousands of years old. They're the faded legacy of a mysterious ancient Native American race that lived here during a time we know next to nothing about. The paintings have been here for such a long time that they've begun to fade, leaving them looking almost like ghostly apparitions on the rock. It's thought that the work was carried out by a combination of the Archaic, Fremont, and Utes people over a period that continued for countless centuries. It was the Utesh people that gave the state of Utah its name. In some of their artwork, there's a clue to the date of its origin. The paintings feature horses, and so must have been made after 1493. There were no horses at all in North or South America until Christopher Columbus brought them on his second voyage to the Americas that year. The art of the Utes is the most recent on the walls, but also the most crudely rendered. The oldest is attributed to the Archaic people, is presented in the Barrier Canyon style, and might be 9,000 years old. The image etched onto the artifact known as the Lenape Stone is so controversial that most historians would prefer to dismiss it as a hoax than investigate it properly. It was broken in half when it was discovered, with the second piece found shortly after the first. Both discoveries took place in Bucks County, Pennsylvania in 1872. The artifact is so controversial because the scene on it seems to show a group of Native Americans hunting a woolly mammoth. That suggests an overlap between the existence of woolly mammoths and Native American tribes in the region. That ought to be an impossibility because mammoths became extinct in North America at least 10,000 years ago whereas the hunting tools shown in the carvings were invented no more than 2,000 years ago at most. Historians say that the scene was carved into the stone long after it was broken in two, and so it's not a genuine artifact. They also say that the carvings don't line up perfectly, which proves that the stone was already broken when they were made. 
Taking all of that into account, we can say that the Lenape Stone is probably a forgery, but there will always be an element of doubt. Dighton Rock has been causing controversy in the United States of America for longer than the United States of America has been an independent nation. It was first written about by Reverend Cotton Mather in 1690, who observed that no man alive knew when or how the multiple inscriptions on the coastal rock outcrop were made. In the centuries that have passed since then, the credit for this enigmatic work in Berkeley, Massachusetts, has been given to Native Americans, Portuguese visitors, lost tribes of Norsemen, and even the ancient Phoenicians. It's fair to say that nobody really knows the truth. Of the options on the table, the Portuguese explorer Miguel Cortareal might be the most likely candidate, although why he chose this particular style for the artwork is a mystery. Fringe theorists aren't satisfied with that explanation. Some of them even believe that the markings were made by Chinese sailors who reached Berkeley in the early 15th century. The debate about the rock might never end, but the artifact itself has been removed from its original location and taken to a museum for preservation. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!